First story. Entitled wife demands we send our son to conversion camp after he came out because she is ashamed of her son being gay. So I filed for divorce. And she physically assaulted our son. Calling him a FG got and claiming he ruined her life in front of our daughter. Then broke my ribs for stopping. Now regrets everything. Realizing she lost all her family and is behind bars. So, this is a pretty heavy situation. And I'm really confused and disgusted. Not gonna lie. Because I never thought my wife was like this. My wife 44F and I 45M have been married for 14 years. We have two kids, a 16-year-old son, let's call him Noah, and a 12-year-old daughter. We've had our fair share of disagreements over the years, but things have generally been smooth between us. Now for the context. Noah came out as gay about a year ago. It was a surprise, and as hard as it was to accept, I love my kids more than anything and just want their happiness. My wife visibly didn't take it well, though. She was upset and seemed to go through a grieving period where she didn't really talk about it. I tried to support Noah in every way I could, telling him that I loved him no matter what. My wife, though, I could tell she wasn't on the same page. She would say things like, this is just a phase, or he needs help, but I brushed it off as her needing time. Fast forward to last week, and we were having a conversation about Noah's future. Out of nowhere, my wife casually mentions that she's been looking into conversion therapy camps and thinks it might be the right solution. She said that Noah isn't truly gay, that he just hasn't been shown the right path, and that this could fix him. My blood ran cold. Obviously, I was in shock. I immediately told her I didn't agree, and that this was not something I could support duh. She got upset and said I was enabling Noah's confusion, and that if I really cared about him, I would help him get better. What the F is wrong with her? She was persistent. And no matter how much I tried to explain that conversion therapy is harmful like I know those kids get abused, sod, and often end up either traumatized or killing themselves, and that I would never send our son to something like that, she wouldn't back down. If I'm being 100% honest, I don't even think I love her anymore. The fact she could be so heartless disturbs me. I know being gay is not easy, and people like her just make it even harder. I'm considering staying, only for our daughter's sake, but would it be okay if it meant hurting my son? It feels like a betrayal to Noah. I just don't think I can keep living with someone who thinks this is okay. Comments. Dog the Bowhunter. Do you really have to ask if you're the arse hole for leaving someone who is trying to abuse your child? She wants him to go get sexually, emotionally, and most likely physically abused at one of these places. Maybe get off Reddit and check on your kid to see if he's okay. OP. I mean, yeah, of course I really want to divorce her. We don't even talk anymore, lol. But I know how damn close my daughter is to her mother. But I know at the moment I need to focus on Noah, and hopefully my daughter will be wise enough to understand. Throw it away 3857. Staying for your daughter's sake. WTF? What about your son? NTA. Divorce her and get full custody immediately. Of both kids. Tell the judge you fear crazy pants will turn your daughter against your son and raise her to be a bigot like her. Also, if you get any of her nonsense in writing get it in text, save it. Don't tell her you're going to use it in court. Conversion camps should be illegal. It's so disgusting. Update. So first of all, I'd like to thank everyone here for all the help and advice I've gotten under my post and in DMs. Sorry if I couldn't answer to everyone. There were just too many effing people. So I posted something about my wife wanting to send my son to a conversion camp two days ago. First of all, some people told me to show her videos and documentaries about what happens there. But this argument has been ongoing for more than a week now. I've shown her things, and she won't budge. Really bad update, if I can be honest, so let's get into it. All of you told me to try to get him out ASAP y'all were definitely right. So yesterday I took the day off and went to see an attorney just to get some info about divorce, etc. But after what happened, I'm 100% sure I want to divorce ASAP. Yesterday I went to pick Noah up at his school, and as many of you suggested, we had a long discussion. I basically told him his mom, and I may be getting a divorce because she wants to send him to a conversion camp. But I can't accept that. I've talked with her many times, and I told him I'd probably go through with it. He looked really hurt my heart broke all over again, but was very understanding and thanked me for standing up for him. I pulled him into a tight hug, and told him I'd always love him no matter what, and that nothing was his fault. At that moment he started crying because he was so glad at least I was on his side. And I'm very pissed. So sorry if I don't make sense. But apparently his mom had been pressuring him for months. She planned dates with girls to try and fix him. And he had to lie by saying he was going to a friend's instead. She was saying he needs help. And as much as she loves him, 
He needs to get his condition cured, etc. I feel so bad because I've been so oblivious to all that. And I've failed to protect him for all that time. How do you make your 16-year-old son go through that? So when we got home yesterday, I can't lie, I was furious and confronted her right there and then. At first she was trying to explain she was doing it for him. But her speech quickly turned to slurs, and it was clear she was just ashamed of having a gay son. In the end, I told her I went to see an attorney, and that learning all that just confirmed that I want a divorce. She got really angry, calling me a delusional disgrace. We argued a lot, and at some point Noah tried to separate us, but my wife punched him multiple times. She was saying disgusting things like he is a dirty FG got, and that it's all his fault we're getting divorced because his filth corrupted me. My daughter, who was probing in her room, came to see what all that commotion was about, and was rightfully horrified and quickly called 911 when I told her to. Long story short, the cops got there and took her away she was very reluctant to go because she was not in the wrong, and they needed to let her go. I explained everything to my daughter, and she doesn't want anything to do with her mom anymore. RN I'm in the hospital because my STB ex-wife broke my rib while I was restraining her. I should have probably gone as soon as the cops took her, but I don't care. My son was crying with a black eye and split lip, they are checking for any concussion. And obviously the only thing I cared about was to comfort him, because I can't even imagine what it can feel like being beaten by your mom for being gay. I'm planning to file for full custody of her, and my kids don't want to see her ever again anyway. Given all the charges she's facing, I hope she won't stand a chance against me. I just sent a mail to my attorney, and I hope the procedures will be fast. I've also thought of getting CPS involved, but I'm not sure they will really help. Like, I cannot understand how you can grow so resentful of your own kid because of something they can't control. Even I had pretty strong opinions about it. But as a father, it is my role to unconditionally love my kids. And so I learned about the topic and changed my way of seeing the world for him. It took some time grasping it, but I never doubted one sec the love I have for my child. I thought it was the same for my wife. Visibly not. Comments. Educational underscore gas underscore 92. I have my doubts that this is real. I think it is a work of fiction, honestly. How convenient that only two days later, OP updates, and the mother isn't just against homosexuality, only believable part. But she is also violent and stupid. And she broke OP's rib with what? Did she have a weapon? How heavy set is she? Breaking ribs isn't easy, especially if the other person is bigger and stronger which I presume OP is compared to his wife. Then she is also dumb enough to attack the teenager and doesn't stop when the police show up. Conveniently, OP had no idea about her views regarding homosexuality. It had never come up in over 16 years of marriage considering what a common topic. This is with gay rights, homosexuals being main characters in movies and TV shows, gay parades, etc. I mean, I just don't think this is real, sincerely. OP. I completely understand your point, but trust me, I wish it was fake. We probably talked about homosexuality before, of course, but I don't recall her ever being hostile about it. About the ribs, yeah, I'm a short guy. My wife's much taller and heavier than me. I think she could snap me in half if she wanted. But yeah, anyway, in the end, the only thing I care about is my kid's safety. In the end, the rest doesn't matter. Second story. My ex-husband cheated and left me for his affair partner 17 years ago. Now his affair partner contacted me wanting to be friends and said her husband cheated on her, expecting me to sympathize and support her. I ignored her and my mom who is an affair partner herself, and she pushed me to forgive my ex-husband and move on. She says I should support her along with her feminist friends. I don't understand why I'm in this situation. And honestly, I'm frustrated because even my own family tells me I'm the bad one here. I just need to vent. And I don't need any advice or somebody telling me. Do this. I think you should tell her this, or, I would write her this or this. More than 17 years ago, my ex-husband cheated on me with a woman I didn't know. But she knew me. He left me for her. Our only daughter was a baby, and I just moved on with my life. I'm never going to fight for a man who makes immature decisions without first thinking about the consequences. He married that woman, and I went on with my life, preferring to have healthy co-parenting for my daughter. He never showed remorse, and he had even told me that ours was always a mistake, and that woman was the love of his life. That helped me to realize that he's a total DCK, and I don't need a man like that in my life. Now, he cheated on her. And for some reason, this woman, who always had a really cold and distant relationship with me, is insisting on trying to talk with me every day. I found out about the infidelity from my daughter, who wasn't affected by that, so I didn't think too much about it. 
The only thing that worried me was to know if he was going to be able to continue having our daughter at his house on weekends as always. But his wife started sending me messages explaining what happened when I never asked her that. And in the past I only spoke to her if her husband didn't answer my text to ask something about my daughter. It's obvious that she needs to talk about it. It doesn't matter if I answer dryly because she sends me long audios talking about it anyway. I mean, I understand that she needs to talk about her husband's infidelity and blah. But why me? I don't want to be rude. But I don't care how she or he feels. In one of her audio, she says. You know how I feel now. Like, I guess? But that was 17 years ago. It's not the same. And if I'm being 100% honest, she can't compare herself to me at all. A woman who has just given birth to whom her husband tells her that he has been cheating on her for a long time with another woman who is not boring in bed and does know how to value him versus a woman who always knew that her husband is unfaithful and decided to marry him anyway. Anyway, I've tried to ignore her as much as I can. But even when I talk to my family or friends about this, almost all of them told me things like, oh, but she must feel lonely. But she wasn't to blame for being the other one. I think you should be more empathetic. We all need someone to talk to, or my favorite one. She's not to blame for him being a cheater. You should understand her because she needs help. I understand that she is not to blame, and he's the cheater. But she, a totally adult woman at that time, decided to marry a man she knew was sleeping with her, while his wife was pregnant. So why should I now carry the weight of helping her, when she never helped me by telling me, hey, your husband slept with me, and that's really shtty because he's married with you. Or that's what I'd do if a married man flirted with me. Now, if she didn't do any of that, then why is it my duty as a feminist to force myself to be her friend? It doesn't make sense. And the worst thing is that almost all the women around me tell me that I should help her and be her ear when I don't want or feel empathy for her or for him. I think she, and he knew very well what they were getting into. I don't understand why I should be her free therapist now. Being cheated on is not my whole personality. I don't need to talk about that 24 sevenths with her. I just chose to ignore her. And that's what I'm going to continue doing because I just don't care how she feels. Even if I'm a bad feminist for not feeling empathy. Sorry, my first language is Spanish. And I wrote everything pretty annoyed. Edit. No, I can't block her because she's still living with him. And I need to have her contact in case of an emergency with my daughter. And honestly, it's weird to have so many comments. And even private messages from people wanting to tell me what I should send to her. And even write what I feel. I'm sorry. But there's no way I'm going to use the message of a stranger who doesn't know how I feel or the whole situation to say something to someone. I feel like a lot of people in the comments are reflecting their own traumas. Update. 13 days later. Hi. It's been a while since I posted. And I just wanted to give a little update for people who were worried. First of all, my mother was a lover for a long time when I was a teenager and during my adulthood. Their relationship lasted long years until he died. I think his wife never found out about his affair. That's why my mom manipulates me so much into not judging my ex's wife, because no one chooses who to fall in love with. My mother always reflected herself on that woman. And that's why she said that my ex-husband and his lover now wife are soulmates. And I shouldn't get in the way. I was very young. At the time I could only lean on my mother for a little support. And well, narcissists always catch vulnerable people. Nowadays I don't have much contact with her. But my daughter spends time with my family. And about my friends. Well, I am a feminist activist, and opinions regarding lovers are divided because most of them are on the liberal side. Most of the time it is seen as something misogynistic to judge them because they are single women and the man is the one we should blame plus we need to be sorers with other girls, so I expected that reaction from most of them. I agree with that in most cases but not in this one. I can feel empathy when the woman did not know or when she is a minor being groomed. But in this case I do not feel any pity because she knew well what she was doing. Women can also be mean and cruel. Women can also choose to be the bad guys in the story without someone manipulating us. Because we are not weak and my ex's wife is that kind of woman. No one manipulated her into doing anything. I'm sorry, that explanation was perhaps unnecessary. But there were people who didn't understand my family's and friends' behavior. And honestly, it feels good to vent. I have spoken with my ex's wife, because honestly, a few days ago, I had a really stressful day and the last thing I needed was to see her messages in my WhatsApp. So I just exploded. I planned to continue ignoring her. But that day I was upset about things about my work. And I ended up telling her everything. I sent her an audio telling her that I am not interested in her life or in the fact she's suffering. I told her that I am not her friend, nor am I interested in being one. 
She never asked me for forgiveness, and now she expects me to start the group of women cheated on by my ex. I told her other things, and I would love to be able to post audios here. I told her that she knew very well what she got herself into. She knew well that my ex was capable of cheating on the mother of his baby. But she still decided to marry him, and live the stupid fantasy that she could change him, and that she was different from all the other women he was with. God, I hate long audios, but it was five plus whole minutes telling her that her situation and mine are nothing alike. I think that was my greatest catharsis. She got upset, and we started arguing. It was quite tiring, and the last thing I want is to have problems after 17 years of having normal co-parenting. I know they are not going to get divorced, and that means I will have to live with her in my life forever. So I sent a message to my ex resending him one of the audios she sent me. I took the work to listen to them all, and she never apologized to me. I don't need her apologies, BTW. I don't care. But some comments asked me about that. They were just audios complaining and wanting us both to speak badly about him or wanting to have me as her free therapist. I told my ex to tell his wife to calm down and pay for a psychologist. He apologized to me and told me that they are both working on the marriage. So they are at the stage where she still feels angry and insecure with him like, yes, obviously. Idiot so since I suffered the same no, it's not the same. She felt that we could share the pain. He told me that they both started going to the online conferences. I don't know what couple teaches how to get over an infidelity. Sometimes I feel envious of people who can scam others so easily anyway. I told him that I am not friends with her and that this affects our co-parenting, so he should put a stop to her if she doesn't understand what I say. In the end, he reluctantly told me he was going to talk to her, and I've gone three days without any message from her except for today, where she just told me that my daughter was sleeping there, so I guess it worked. I don't care if they live a happy or miserable marriage. I don't care if she's happy knowing that he cheated on her, but stays with him anyways. I just want to live in peace without getting into trouble with people who, at plus 40 years old, are still living mentally in high school. Third story. Misogynist partner resents OP for earning more than him and not giving him access to her finances while mooching off her. He now demands to name their baby with his family name, then had a meltdown OP used hers and harassed her until he was killed by a car accident while drunk. Now his family harassing OP for claiming his insurance. So I had a baby some weeks ago with my partner, to whom I'm not married. We've been together a while, and I've made many compromises in this relationship. While discussing baby's name, we had a few disagreements on names, but ultimately decided on a name we both liked well enough. The surname was a sticking point. He wanted the baby to have his name alone. I offered to hyphenate because logistically it's easier for the baby to have both of our names. He's been drinking the red pill cool aid, lately a large bone of contention in this relationship, and went off about how it's tradition and the right thing to do and his right as a man to have the baby have his surname. He told me I'd be emasculating him and may as well be a single parent if I won't grant him this one little ask. My word is final babies having one surname. This was late in my pregnancy, and I didn't have it in me to fight. So I told him that I understood what he was saying. Fast forward to three weeks ago, when the baby's birth certificate came. He blew a gasket when he saw that I'd given the baby my surname. He rehashed the conversation above, saying I agreed to giving baby his surname. This is where I might be ta. I did nothing of the sort. I told him I understood him, which I did, but I never said I agreed with him. I told him there was no way I was doing all the work of making a baby for him to stick his name on it. When we bought up tradition, I told him it's also traditional for him to marry me before having a baby. But he was happy to ignore that. I told him it was traditional for him to be the provider. But I do that too. And I pointed out other holes in his logic. I told him trying to bully me into submission with his red pill when I was exhausted from pregnancy didn't work. He should have known better than to expect me to not share a surname with my child. He said the baby should only have one surname they do. So why is he mad? He went crying to his brothers and mother all traditionalists and misogynists, and now they're all up in arms. Ada? Ida. There seems to be some confusion, we are not married or engaged. I don't believe in it. And he's never seen the point of bring the state into your relationship. So we agreed to never marry. He's on the birth certificate, as the father the baby just has my last name. But father is listed. Thanks for your feedback. I'll be asking him to come for a talk, so I can clearly address the issues you guys have helped me see. Thank you for that. Update. So it turns out, he's got deep-seated resentment for me, lol. He resents me for earning more money than him, being further in my career than he is, not losing my job during COVID like he did, 
Having parents who love and support me. Not being a submissive woman lol. Having a present and loving father. Not combining our finances under his control, thus making him feel small. On the brighter side, I'm 12 weeks postpartum and already 75 kilograms lighter. So when I last came here, I said I'd asked him to come home and discuss our future with baby, preferably in the presence of a neutral party. He left me on read for a few days, though I could see he was spying on us through the ring doorbell and baby's monitor. I disconnected them both, and he finally responded. He came home, still irate. His stance still hadn't changed. He seemed to have been bolstered by the days he spent with his family. He rejected my request for us to do this in the presence of a couple's therapist, the best neutral compromise I could offer. I asked him how he proposed we move forward. Then he went on a rant where the above came out. It was a full mask-off moment if there was any part of me that wanted you guys to be wrong about him. It died that day. He again rejected the offer to hyphenate the baby's surname. Apparently, I'm disrespectful and insolent funny enough his mother's favorite words to scold people she disagrees with for refusing to do what's right and give baby their rightful surname. I told him I wouldn't go through the administrative nightmare of having a different surname for my child. And lots of data shows a double-barred surname is social currency that has positive connotations. Nope he wouldn't budge. I told him neither would I baby either has both our surnames or mine alone. He asked if this was a hill I wanted this relationship to die on. If I was prepared to throw half a decade down the drain over my silly little feminism. I told him I wasn't sure there was anything left to fight for. We broke up. Thankfully, our in his name lease expires at the end of May. I called my dad, and he came to help me back up, baby. X went back to his mom's while we packed. I messaged him to suggest, we still need couples counseling. We need to learn to be co-parents, and they can help us establish a healthy way of doing that. He again said no to that, so. My mom wanted to take me and my baby on a baby moon holiday after this stressful period. But he would grant permission for me to take my baby abroad. It was at that moment that I wished I didn't have him on the birth certificate like some of you accused me of. It's going to be a long road ahead. I've instructed a lawyer to help us set up a formal agreement to avoid this in the future. He's not responding to correspondence from the lawyer, so that's fun. He's sulking used to do this a lot when things didn't go his way. I hope he'll soon realize I no longer have time for his BS, and I won't be toyed with because I called his bluff and ended the relationship. To end on a bright note, the house I wanted us to buy a couple of years ago, which he talked me out of until he was back on his feet again despite us being able to afford it on my salary alone back on the market. I took his fate. It's time to move on from this man. It's a beautiful Victorian terrace near good schools, good transport links, a small garden, and close to my parents. It would be the perfect home for baby and MME. I put in an offer last night. Wish me luck, it's in a chain. So if my offer is accepted, it won't be ours for months. But my parents have allowed Baby and Neem to move in to their granny annex for free my village. Update. Hi. This is really more of a method to help me process, per my therapist guidance than anything else. He's dead. He died a week after my last update. His funeral was last month, and it's been hell. He heard from a mutual friend that I'd put an offer in on the house and came to my parents where Baby and I were staying in a drunken rage. It was late, after 10, and he was causing a ruckus and disturbing the neighbors. He wouldn't leave and kept hurling nasty things at me, how I was keeping his baby from him despite him making zero effort to see them after we separated, how I robbed him of his legacy, how I couldn't wait to be rid of him, and how much he hated me. He went from begging to pleading to cursing me, and trying to kick down my parents' door to crying. I opened a window and told him to leave, or we'd call the police. He refused, so we called them. He ran away. I'm still not sure on the details because his family won't tell me. But I gather he was trying to cross a busy road with the awareness of a drunk, angry man and got hit by a car. He died on before the ambulance arrived. I found out when his mother called, screaming down the phone, crying about how I'd killed him. She blames me. Even at his funeral, she made sure to tell people how I was to blame for her baby boy's untimely death. I know it's not my fault. Rationally and logically, I did not tell him to make the series of bad decisions that led to his death. But I still feel guilty. His mother tried to claim his life insurance that I paid for. She said he'd told her he'd change it for her to be the beneficiary. I don't know how far true it is, but I refused and told her the purpose was to help set baby up for life, if one or both of us met an untimely death. So that's what it will do. She's threatened to sue me, but I don't know where that will lead. I am exhausted. I'm tired and I'm grieving. And I'm being told I have no right to mourn him. We got the house. 
but it won't be ready until late September. His mother tried to claim a share of that, too, even though her son made no contributions to it. They've made no efforts to see baby and refused to let me visit the funeral parlor with them to say goodbye to their dad. I'm drained. I was supposed to go back to work soon, but thankfully my employer is understanding. We've booked a trip out of the country while we wait for the house's completion. I've become the target of a harassment campaign from my ex's family, who are calling me all sorts. I don't know why I'm sharing this here. Perhaps because I've deleted all my own social media accounts. It's nice to be able to post somewhere where no one knows me. Where no one will accost me in the streets, at work, or at home to call me a murderer. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.